Hey everyone, got another game on the Golden Pack today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as you can see from the thumbnail, Warthog and Pterodon are pretty good. If you want to just watch them, I would skip around to probably like turn 11-ish, but yeah, I'm going to show the whole game even if it is like 10 minutes long because, I don't know, it might be useful to see it <clears throat> the beginning to know how to win. But yeah, uh, I'm going to use the Possum. I think Possum is one of the better animal or tier 1 animals in this pack. Just because his stats are decent, I mean 2-3 is always pretty good, and its ability is not bad. I mean in the golden pack, there aren't too many good tier 2s that have a faint ability, but like, uh, I think it was the black necked stilt, that's pretty decent. <clears throat> Again, magpie, one of my favorite animals, just because you save a gold, you don't have to waste it on rolling, and it carries over. We're gonna go for the level 2. Musk Ox did get a nerf, but still not bad just to buy it. Is a free um four five I think because it gains two one. Oh no, it gains one two. Okay. Yeah, we are gonna lose, but I do like how you only lose uh, the amount of animals they have left. So if they only have one animal left, uh, you're only gonna lose one life. I find that a lot of the um games last longer, which I think is fun, especially because you could experiment with some late game stuff. Oh, that's embarrassing. I just tried to buy that, but we could just save the gold and buy it next turn. Pretty nice. So like, it is kind of a priority now to have your team be decent mid game, because losing <clears throat> like really bad is actually quite bad now, because you only start with um, 9 hearts instead of 10. so. You do need some decent mid game. Can't just like, I don't know, throw it all into scalers and like be bad for a couple rounds and then come back later on. I mean, I guess he could, it's just a little bit more risky. Also, there aren't that many great scalers. This uh, baboon is one of the best scalers in the pack. Even just in general, for tier 3, it's quite good. So I do get it. I also get the Royal Flycatcher, one of the best pets in the pack also. Just in general, I'm pretty sure. The fact that you could snipe stuff when summoned and gain stats is good, especially with trumpets because they're like guaranteed to summon something if they have any trumpets, so a guaranteed gain of stats. Do get the cuttlefish. I do like the uh, what's it called? The ink ability or the ink food where Ink, what is it even called? I don't know, status where they deal less damage. It is kind of cool against uh, certain pets if you have them, but I don't know. I haven't found any great use of it yet. I am going to go Saga Antelope. It is pretty good uh, mid game just because if you have a level 2, or realistically, you'd probably want a level 1 with a cherry on it because it's just as good. But it basically gives an 8 8 if you don't have. Or if all of your pets only sum or yeah, die one time. I phrased that weird. If none of your pets summon anything and you have four pets, you're gonna get an eight eight golden retriever. And that's pretty good. But I mean you can increase it if you buy like a slug. That'll be another four four. It's pretty good. Especially because Cherry just like doubles the level one ability, so I would have rather gone a uh Level 1 with Cherry, but I had enough to go level 2, so it's fine. I just know I'm probably going to be selling it later on, so best not to spend too much gold. Golden Retriever going to save me. Turn 9 now. Level up Sea Lion, and we find the Warthog. Uh, it's pretty good that we find it here because the Sea Lion does give some attack depending on where you put it. So yeah, it takes some time to figure out where to put it, and I want it in the front to give everything attack. Oyster, some free gold. And another antelope just for now, just to maybe help not lose this round. Again, cherry, pretty good on the Saiga antelope. Probably one of the best animals to have a cherry on, just because it's one more for each time, and <clears throat> yeah, basically doubles. Warthog is pretty sad at a low stats, but once we buff it up, it'll be very, very good.
Right now I'm not looking for much except chocolates and eggplant pretty much just to get some more attack. Oh yeah, sea lion also gonna help give attack. Pretty good scaler. I mean it pretty much gives plus 2-2 two, two in total. Well I guess just 4 stats and you can kinda choose which ones the stats are. Ooh, a little rough. Almost came close to drawing, but it's fine. Turn six. And we find the pterodon here. Um, I'm not, I think this is my first time using the interaction, so I do have to read it. But pterodon, if a friend faints, you just activate the ability again. And then when you level it up, it does it one, two, or three times. It's important to note, though, that the level two <clears throat> just lets it activate two different pets faints. It doesn't activate the same faint twice. So, yeah. It's not broken, broken, but it is quite good. So, yeah, my goal now is just going to be leveling up and buffing up my Warthog so that, uh, and I guess finding more Pterodons so that everything will have a bunch of stats. I do Pita Bread the Warthog here. Uh, generally Pita Bread's good just because, I mean it's like Melon Armor, who wouldn't buy Melon Armor? However, I think in this case it is bad on the Warthog because as you'll see later, the main weakness of this team is having your Pterodon sniped and having Pita Bread on the Warthog just means it's like one extra <clears throat> uh, like turn where your pterodons have a chance of dying, so you kind of want your warthog to die as fast as possible, which is like kind of counterintuitive, but it's better to have it die and have your 50-50s than to have it do one extra attack and not have 50-50s. Yeah, Royal Flycatcher, pretty decent just against summoning. Because in the golden pack, there is a decent amount of summoning. I am going to try to get my Warthog to level 3, and the nice thing about Pterodon, I mean I'm checking right now, but yeah, you don't need to level it up if you're using this strategy, just because you're only going to have one Warthog dying, so the level 1 ability is good enough, and the thing is, its ability just activates the faint ability again, so it doesn't even mention level 1, so it activates the level 3 Warthog ability again, so that is very very good. As you can see, I mean, that's just a lot of stats. Do clutch it with the Royal Flycatcher hitting that. Actually, uh, I think it did matter that it sniped all the pigs, but... Okay, there we go, level 3. And, yeah, now I'm just gonna be giving it attack. There's, like, no other improvement for my team. Well, I guess maybe making sure my Pterodons don't die, so if I find Potato, I should be buying it, although... I probably will forget. But yeah, this team looking pretty good. I mean, just look how many stats. Oh, this is the, the round where sniping was a problem. Oh wait, no, it was a different round. But yeah, look at those stats. I pretty much just gave every single pet 50-50. Well, did it give it 50-50, but got them to 50-50. That's really good. I mean, it's just a one Warthog giving all those stats. And the pterodons you don't even have to buff up. You can just give them like pita bread or something. So that when they do get the stats they'll have like the pretty much coconut armor. This guy's also using warthog pterodon but I mean he only has one pterodon and I have three. So I'm pretty much just double his stats. There we find the pita breads. I am going to give it to the pterodons. It probably will help them survive like one snipe, but it's not amazing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the ability just goes four times. It's like an insane amount of stats. I should have leveled, or what's it called? I should have given my Warthog more attack to get it to 50-50, but I also, it wasn't really necessary. And also like... Yeah, I didn't need it, but for the clickbait, it would have been cool. 
Yeah, here you can see the sniping mattering because I only have 150-50 now. I mean, 150-50 is still good. I get him to only one pet, but I do lose. But I didn't lose the entire game, so at least that was good. Yeah, I definitely should have bought that potato on the pterodon. I'm like trying to figure out how to get them not sniped. I decided with the pretzel, but yeah, I kind of forget that potato exists. But yeah, I mean, even a 38 attack Warthog, it's not even maxed out, but it still gives the entire team max stats. No snipers on this guy's team, very nice. One last time, we'll see it in action. I mean, that's, that's just amazing. Like, no other pet could do that. I think Warthog, one of the best pets in the pack, so is Pterodon, and yeah, especially with attack being so easy to get, I think this strategy will be quite broken, especially in custom packs. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a nice day. See ya.